Howdy, I'm Matt and this video is all about making custom Lion battery packs for RC aircraft. As many of you know that I'm an avid fan of using Lion or 18650 Lion batteries because of the sheer capacity which they have in them. So that's what this video is about. We are going to be making up not one, but three of these Lion packs. Uh, and it is going to be a step-by-step -step journey. Uh, and we go from talking about the cells all the way through to soldering up and the bits and bobs which you need to make your own battery packs. Now, I need to give you a heads up. There are no specialist tools which are required to do this I am literally using some solder and a soldering iron and some common sense so with that said let's jump into this episode it is a little bit longer than normal because it really is a step-by-step -step guide any comments or suggestions as we go through please let me know in the comments section underneath this video so with that intro done let's get to it Howdy, it's Matt, and in this episode we are going to be making ourselves some 2S Lion packs. Now, those of you which don't know, I'll give you a quick rundown. Lion batteries are more energy dense than LiPos, and in situations such as the Dart 250G, or maybe the ZOHD Drift, will give you an absolutely obscene amount of flight time in the sky. Now, obviously, there are negatives to this, such as cost. These cells genuinely are more expensive than comparable LiPo batteries. But I don't want to rinse this down in all the details. Basically, you already know that you're going to be using LiPo, uh, Lion batteries. So that's what we're going to be doing. So to do this, you will obviously need some Lion batteries. Now, you'll notice there's two different colours here on my desk. Uh, I have the NCR 18650Bs. Now, these are 3400 and rated to 5 amps. I also have, let me get this right, the LG M36 3600 milliamp here. 5 amp rated Lion battery cells as well. So, we are actually making two packs for Andy and one extra pack for Matty. Uh, so that's the reason for the video because I'm doing this anyway and I think I thought that you would enjoy the journey too. Now we will need some tools. Uh, I've got the soldering iron on over there. Uh, we've got some caps on tape. Now any tape will do. I've just got some posh stuff so literally and again it doesn't matter as long as it's sellotape tape and hold it together. Now you could use hot glue to join the cells together uh, to make sure that they don't fall apart. However, actually one thing which I have been amiss and I just saw it down here is that I do have some double-sided foam tape and that's what I'll be putting between the batteries to keep them stuck together. Again, that in the middle of the batteries and then that pulling it tight will mean the batteries will stay together because you don't want the cells to move over time. We've got some XT30 connectors, we've got some nickel tape. Now I'll, uh, I'll put a link to this, you can buy it from eBay, Banggood and a couple of other places. This is a 8 millimeter wide uh, nickel tape. It's not very cheap, I've got to be honest with you, although it does seem to last me at least absolutely ages. Uh, we've also got some balance leads as well. Now, those are for 2S, I'll put links to those in the video description as well. Uh, I do have a flux pen as well, these cost about four quid off eBay. These are an absolutely invaluable tool. I've got some 18WG uh, AWG cable, which is right for this battery, and we're not talking mass amps anyway. The drift light pulls three amps, and the same for the uh, Dart 250. We are dealing with very low current applications, so we've got that. Oh, and of course, I've got some sanding paper. This is 240 grit paper paper so very very fine and what I've already been and done is that I've gone through and I've just lightly sanded uh, the top and the bottoms of each of the cells just to remove any grime or anything like that so when we do put some solder on those uh, cells in a few moments time is that they will take them to them very very easily. Now before we go any further um, word of caution I am using a soldering iron now, very recently, and I'll cut to this, and uh, you'll put it up on your screen right now, is that I discovered is that if you do put a blowtorch on the end of one of these and hold it on the end of a Lion 18650 cell, after about two minutes, they will go bang. So, for me, with a soldering iron, for a very short period of time, literally less than one second, you'll see me doing this in a moment, uh, is absolutely nothing. But, of course, if you would feel more comfortable wearing safety gear, health and safety starts with you. Not me, I don't wear any glasses, you wear glasses, whatever makes you feel comfortable, go for it. However, after literally sticking up blowtorch on that, 
on those cells. I'm not that bothered at all, to be brutally honest. So, let's get going. The first thing I'm going to do is going to get this pen. Now, the one big tip for these uh, flux pens, and flux just helps solder flow because it helps inhibit, inhibit the oxygen, it's oxygen, it's oxygen, you know what I mean. So I'm just going to put a lump on there uh, and you'll see it's wet on top uh, and then I'll quickly just go through and do the tops of all these and all I'm going to do is grab my solder, I'm going to run across the tops of those uh, with the solder iron and just get a bead of solder on each of them. Two, three, four, five, six, Right, as I went through and did each one of those, I literally blew them as well just to get rid of the heat. Uh, the irony is, is that people aren't really concerned about the, the, them blowing up in their faces when they're soldering these up. They're on about the damage which could cause to the inside of the cells. Personally, I have not experienced anything major or anything of noteworthiness uh, by doing that. Uh, and I will continue to solder them. As much as it would be nice to have a stick welder, uh, sorry, one of those little tack welders, uh, it's not something which I personally see me uh, spending the time to make anytime soon. So I've just sticking them inside the tape reel just to hold them still. Again, same thing all the way through. Plenty of flux, it really does help the solder flow. Uh, and you'll notice that I really am not on the bottom of the cells for anything more than a second, if that. Uh, when I'm on there, I'm melting the solder to the soldering iron uh, and then uh, putting it on top. So I get a bead on the top of it and then I present the solder to the bottom of the cell blow and it, the heat's already gone. So same again, applying the solder uh, and then all I'm after is just a pad on there which I can solder to uh, in a few moments time. And I am just trying to make a puddle like so. There you go. I'm just working my way round. That was about the worst one I've ever had then. <laughs> Alright, and the other two have been awkward. Alright, let's get that on there. Nice bead. There we go. That one could do a little bit more. So I'm going to give it a little bit more. There we go. And the last one. There we go. Right, you'll see that I'm not using a large, in fact, let me zoom in, uh, you'll see that I'm not using a large amount of solder on each and every single one. It's just enough so that we have a contact between them. Right, the next part of the process is, and by the way, I put my hand straight on this, there's no heat left in the bottom of those. The next thing which I'm gonna go and do is that I'm gonna solder up and pre-solder the tins, uh, pieces of nickel strip uh, and the reason for that is that it makes soldering it to the cells much much easier so again out with the solder pan like so and if I mess these up you see it on the camera yeah again just putting the solder on the desk out that would be warm there we go So, we don't need any masses about it on here, it's just so that it forms a contact uh, with the top of the battery cell. Uh, and by doing this, we reduce the amount of heat which we put into the cell uh, because there's already been pre-soldered. So that makes things so, so much easier. I'm just gonna go back and put a little tab more on there and go back to the first one as well. So there you go, I have pre-tinned uh, the tabs and those are gonna be the joiners between the cells. So next things, Next, let's zoom out or in or wiggle it around. Let's just push those to one side, out of the way. Now, need to get those the right way around. What I am gonna do is just go and get myself a bit of double-sided foam tape and a pair of scissors. And the reason why I'm doing this is so that it keeps the cells together and I also limit the amount of weight which is inside the cells themselves. So let's stick those to each other and it does help if we do them level like so fantastic and I could probably use half that uh, amount of tape which I think I will do next so all I'm going to do is put that on the desk so this time around all I've been and done is use the same foam tape I've just cut it in half so that I'm using less like so and we want positive to negative and negative to positive Fantastic, and I'm just squeezing them together so that they are 
held together and then you've got to think by the time you put the tape on them happy days they are going to be absolutely fine so again these batteries are for me and Andy uh, I want the 3600 well I'm having a 3600 pack and Andy's having a smaller uh, one of the NCR packs. As I say smaller, those NCR packs have been absolutely fantastic. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut to a screenshot of some, not DVR footage, of, from a summary within iNav, uh, and you will see that I did 48, are we allowed to say 48 kilometres? I think that's fair, we were very, very close, 47 and a bit uh, kilometres. Fantastic, so we've now got the bottom and the top. So what we're going to now do, is line all these up like so uh, and what we now want to do is tack weld those to each of these so all I'm going to do is get the solder in iron and the goal is is to melt the solder between the nickel strip down onto the solder which is below and I've just put them in one line uh, and I'll just do them individually so all I'm going to do is just going to preheat the solder there put that in on top and you'll feel it go down fantastic I've seen it melt underneath and that's obviously on there nice and straight now you'll notice the way round which I've just been and done it you'll notice that I did the flat cell first and then I did the positive terminal and the reason why I did that uh, is because we will see if you look on there the positive terminal, it's actually this little metal plate which is raised up and beyond. So you really want to keep the, if anywhere, the heat down on the bottom of the negative terminal of the 18650. On the top of the cell, it doesn't matter that much because it really is this little raised platform on the top. So let's do this again, is that I am gonna work around that way round. So I'm gonna do the Net, uh, the ground side first to so quickly melt that so there's some heat there uh, and remember that will expedite the process when I now put the heat down on the top of the tin foil. You notice how close my finger is to that so because we are really not dealing with large amounts of heat for any period of time and I'm just going to turn that around and then what you're looking for is for the cell to sink down, the tape to sink down into the top of the cell itself. There we go. And there goes my phone, which I will now put on mute. I think that was Andy pinging me in the background about these. Yes, it was. Right, so I've just stuck that on silent. Right, they move those two out of the way. Next one, same process, just different colored batteries. Uh, all I'm gonna do is just quickly melt that solder there. So there's a tiny bit of heat in there just to expedite the process heat through the top and you, you will see how close my finger is there uh, and that's more of just of a temperature indicator just to make sure it really is going through this one's been a bit of a toad right next stage of the process is just to quality control what we've been and done all I'm going to do is take my fingernail and I'm going to try and pull the nickel tape off uh, on there just to make sure that I know because this these batteries are going to be flying above my head so take that as a point. If these are gonna be flying above your head, you're gonna do the same. We're just gonna get our nail and we're just gonna try and pull the nickel strip away just to make sure that it is really is soldered down, which all of those are, which is happy days. Right, now let's move on to the power side. So what I'm gonna do is get these all faced up. Now this is where you start need to be being really careful. Obviously don't put these on a metal bench uh, and for obvious reasons, because you're gonna short them out. Uh, and let's put those on there. Next is up, we're gonna make some wires for these. Uh, and all I'm going to do is just use my old, my previously made ones as a reference. So I am using approximately seven centimeters of wire. Now the reason why I'm using very short wires here is simply because I tr I'm trying to keep the weight down. Uh, the models which I mentioned a few moments ago, the Dart 250G, uh, so there's one set, the uh, drift for example is that weight matters in a tiny little model it really does uh, and this is one of the nice things about creating your own battery packs uh, is because of the fact that you can customize them to however 
you like. You get to choose the cells which go inside of your model, you get to choose how they are connected, and you get to choose all the components which go with them. So I'm making very simple 2S lions here, but you could quite easily be making 3S, 4S, you could also be making the pack, which I really do need to sort out the balance lead for. You could be making a 4S 2P. So that one there is actually a 7000 milliamp for 4S pack, which is pretty dodgy. Uh, and by the way, those of you which have ever seen my metal to a special 250 gram scales, you'll see that there's some brain marks on top because I put that on top of the surface. And of course, the top of that surface on that. <laughs> Scales is metal. So yeah, it went spark right in front of me, which was really good fun. Yeah, that's the word for it, fun. Right, moving on. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by just removing maybe four mils. I'm just gonna roll the end of the cable with the knife on the top. I'm not, down, I'm not there pushing hard. I am literally just trying to score the surface gently to do one pass. I'm not trying to get down to the wires. Uh, I am simply just trying to get the, to break the seam on the silicone wire. Was that the right end? No, nope, that was the wrong end. Uh, and then I'm twisting it. And it's the nice thing about creating more than one batch or more than one battery at a time uh, is that you do end up kind of like batch processing these pieces. So no, uh, what I'll now do is then hit all of these with the solder and iron uh, and it, to create one pack or sorry, to create three packs is just as quick in many ways as creating one pack or two packs because the amount of time extra is not infinitely more per pack, if that makes sense. So. I'm going to use my pliers just there and I'm just going to hold these up uh, and again if you've got the tool available to you use the flux because the flux will really help the uh, solder flow and I think this one's almost run out I've been through so many of these lately yeah there's oh, there's another one here so we, yeah that one's got I'm just squeezing that one. Oh wow yeah that's got loads 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 and loads and loads more and now we're seeing it rinse out straight away uh, and the reason why we're doing this is that it just makes the solder run uh, much and flow much, much, much better than not using any at all. Now, the solder which I'm using does have flux within it. However, the extra flux really, really does make a difference to it flowing, he says, as he gets it stuck to the top. There we go. Um, what we're after is that we are trying to create a ball of solder on our wire so that in a moment like we did with the top of the wires that we are able to just heat up the two surfaces and then for them to go together again just keeping the amount of heat down for each of the cells which we're dealing with again it's just common sense we need to get in there get out and get done uh, now I'm sure somebody out there is going to be freaking out and going, Matt, that is the most mankiest tip you've ever got, I have ever seen on top of your solder and iron. Uh, my answer and response to that is this solder and iron cost me £7.99 from Screwfix and I bought that about two years ago. Uh, I've left it on far too many times in the office uh, to keep it warm overnight of course. Uh, and it has done me absolutely fantastically proud. Uh, so, and I, the only thing which I did, I did buy some different tips. I bought some super cheap silver line tips uh, from Amazon for like four quid or something like that. Um, so yeah, soldering irons, they're all the same. Some get on, some don't. I always buy the cheap ones because I just absolutely ruin them. Um, but each to their own. Right, I am running out on solder very quickly. Right, this is where things get serious. We are gonna be connecting cables to our batteries and we have the potential of shorts. Now you would have noticed that I have not done and perhaps maybe should now do, in fact I'm gonna change my process, this is where sometimes a little bit of common sense kicks in. What I am now gonna do is that I'm now gonna go and solder up the XT30 connectors on the end. The reason being is that if I had these two wires hanging off the end of here, the chances of me shorting those are very high because they're actually connected to a battery. However, if I have them connected to the XT30, well, there's nothing going to be joined to that, so we'll get that done next. Right, looking at those, we only need a tiny little tab out on the end of these, so I'm going to go maybe three millimeters on the end of these, and it'll be exactly the same process 
as we had before. However, with one addition is that I will be going over there and grabbing some heat shrink, which is the one thing which I missed off the menu, uh, so that we can cover it. Again, just aiming for three millimeters because that's all we really need just to tack it onto the bottom of the XT30 connectors. Now, the reason why I've chosen XT30 connectors in this instance is because we are not dealing with high amounts of current. Uh, if you're dealing more than 10 amps, I would say, then I would probably suggest that you uh, seriously consider using XT60s. And of course, if you're up in the high current usages, then XT90s are an absolute no-brainer, especially the ones which have the anti-spark uh, in them, in other words, a little capacitor uh, and a resistor just to uh, keep things nice and safe. So again, rinse and repeat. In fact, it's probably easier if I do all of these on the desk, like so. And again, like that. It only takes a few seconds just to give them a little dab uh, with some flux. Let's get them all up ready. In fact, we'll do all the black ones first. This is getting a bit desperate now because I've almost run out of solder. And you don't have to use loads, but you just have to use enough so that there's a blob on the end. And the other thing to note is that there is a definite difference in length compared from one end compared to the others because the XT30s um, really just need a short lead on the end of them and that's it. So let's just get and do the positive terminals now. Fantastic. That's where's my wire. Clean off the tip now. See, the tip isn't that bad and it's not in focus, but you'll have to take my word for it. It's really not that bad. It is basically what it is. Right. Let's get these in there. Now, what I need, and a little tip for you, is a pair of long nose pliers, which are not those ones. No, those are not going to do it. Where's my really nice ones? To use those instead. Just get a pair of pliers just to hold uh, your XT30 connector in place. It's, does, it's not there to grip it, it's just there to hold it in place. And what I'm now going to do is so with the XT30s, they're just baby versions of XT60s, uh, and I'm just going to pre tin them, grab our positive wire, like so, and just melt those in. Brilliant visually inspect, wait for the solder to go off, pick it up, turn it round, and then pre-tin, like so. Grab our negative terminal, like so. And I'll tell you what, I'm just gonna speed through these because they're all just repetition, repetition. Right, next up is the bit which I missed, which was some insulation. Uh, I am gonna grab slightly bigger than that. It looks like we're going to be using that, so we need six pieces. We don't need very much, we just want to cover off the bare wires uh, which go into the XT30s. So I'm actually going to cut these into three, they don't need to be super long. Like I said, they're just here to cover any open or any possible chance of shorting out. So let's get those in there. We'll grab the cigarette lighter while we're at it. The beans. And this does make more sense doing it this way round, doesn't it? We'll do the cables which have no connection to them and the second we solder them up, they, they're, they're not going to be connected to anything so they're going to be nice and safe. Uh, so that was a much better idea than what I was originally going to do and also much easier as well. Imagine trying to solder up those XT30 connectors uh, afterwards, after the fact. That would have been a right royal pain in the rear. So they get these on and we'll just stick the cigarette lighter underneath and warm them up and then we are almost on the home straight. Just a daft point, you'll notice that I am using a cigarette lighter uh, but I am moving the cigarette lighter and I am moving the heat shrink which I'm heating up. And the reason why I'm doing that because if you just kept the lighter underneath it, you could inadvertently melt the solder connection which you've just been and made because there will be some residual heat in there and it won't take much just to warm it up. So you'll notice there that I was moving the lighter all the time and rotating this as well and I was in and out as fast as possible. So, right, there's those ones done. Next up is we need to solder these up. Now, it's obvious, but I will mention it anyway because it's written on the hangers negative, okay? The flattest bottom 
of the 18650 is the negative terminal and the terminal with the little bottom button top on the top that is the positive terminal and typically they are clearly marked positive and negative so that's your positive and that's your ground okay uh, so yeah use your common sense if you're unsure see what's written on there okay so we're going to put our red wire uh, onto and this is where I'm going to use that reel to just make things easier uh, and let's get these so I'm looking at the wires and seeing how they naturally fall uh, in front of me so I'm just going to hold that one out of the way like so uh, and again all we're after doing is just heating up the wire and then popping that on the top so number two we'll get the ground on here again just heating up the wire first placing it on the top waiting for it to melt into the solder which was on there previously like so and do a really bad job of that amount on you right that one's done right I'm putting that one to one side because now it's technically live if that makes sense the chances of me shorting that one out uh, it is more than what it was previously so right again just heating up the wire first fantastic right that was all the hard work done so we've now got our three packs ready the next thing for us to do is to do the balance leads. Now, let me grab an existing 2S battery for me to show you uh, how these work. Now, if you're unsure, the best thing which I can recommend is that you grab a multimeter. Uh, but in short, we have, so with, you need to see this a little bit more closely. Right, let me just move those out of the way a moment. Okay, so there's our 2S battery and we have a balance lead. And you will notice that here, we have a pause, so this is the side with the little arrows, the little, um, yeah, the little, little arrows, the little clips on the top, okay? And you will notice that on the left-hand side, we have the positive terminal. In the middle, sorry, let's go with the obvious, right? So we have red, which is positive, and then on the right-hand side, we have ground. So that's kind of obvious. So we're gonna have ground is ground, and then on the positive terminal, we're gonna have 7.4 volts, sorry, eight point four volts, okay, because that's 3.7 plus 3.7, sorry, 4.2 plus 4.2, plus 4 all right, so we'll just go with a fully charged cell. So we've got ground and then 8.4. Now this middle wire is connected to, so we think about this one for a moment, imagine that's our balance lead. So we've got the ground and we've got the positive, so we're gonna have the ground and then 8.4. Where does that other, that middle wire come from. The middle wire comes from down here in between these two cells. So that's what we need to set up for our balance lead. Now a little bit awkwardly, what I've got here with my balance lead is that the yellow and the black wires are around the wrong way round. Now to me, that makes absolutely no difference at all because as long as they're connected up correctly, that's all that matters. However, if you were concerned about that, then you would obviously, you can um, deepen these and change them around. But I'm absolutely, I'm very happy for them to be the way which they are, okay? So with that said, I am gonna take a quick look at how I soldered these ones up before. Brilliant, I can see that now. So the first things first, which I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna solder up the positive terminal to the positive one. And how am I gonna do this? Yeah, and then we're gonna get the middle wire, which is ironically the black one, okay? Or the middle wire on the plug. We put that there a moment. So that one's still going to positive. Okay, the one on the left, like we saw a few moments ago, the yellow one's gonna to go to the negative terminal. And the one which is in the middle, irrelevant of color, is the placement of these, is that's what's gonna to go to the other end of the battery pack. So with that said, let's go and get these pre-tinned. I will not use a battery as a base to do this. Uh, and I'm just gonna roll the knife over the top of the wires again, just like you saw me do a few moments ago. And it's all about the preparation for each of these because I'm just rolling off the cable, rolling off the wires with the knife. I'm zoomed right in there, aren't I? So let's zoom right back out again. There we go. So all I'm doing is rolling on top with the knife just to score the uh, plastic sheath on top. So we've got more wire. I will pre-tin like, just like we've seen before and then I'll quickly work through uh, and I will solder these up. So I'm not putting much pressure on there. I'm just trying to break the outer skin and then just pulling it off with my fingernails. Fantastic. And then the plan is, is for me to connect up the left wire to the positive terminal. 
the right wire to the negative terminal and then the wire which is in the middle I'm going to do that to the end. Now that one may need to be shortened. We will take a look in a moment once I've got these done. So we'll do the first ones first and then we'll go from there. So let's get these pre-tinned. So let's get this the right way round. So this one is the one on the left. So I'm just going to quickly tack that in onto the top of the battery. There we go. I wasn't applying much pressure or I wasn't applying any pressure at all to be honest just there. I was just making sure that it was sticking to the actual cable itself. There we go, that's in. Right, so that's the first two wires done. Fantastic. And now all I'm going to do is bend these down and then poke them out the front like so. Okay, because we don't really need super long balance leads, we just need a balance lead. Uh, and again, realistically, in a Dart 250G, for example, that's going to get in the way anyway. Okay, so that's as long as I'm going to go with that. That now means that we can work out the length of this bottom one, so we'll say about that long. That's about fair, isn't it? We're a little bit extra to, for us to fold up and around. Now these wires have been really nice. You can buy really, really nice silicone wires. I don't have any of those left, unfortunately. Uh, hence, that's the reason why I'm using these. And same again, just gonna grab that black wire and do about a centimetre. Gently roll it on the desk just to break the outer sheath. Pull that off, twist it round. Now, the one thing which, uh, which I just made, a, oh, I made a mistake. What you haven't seen just there is that all the wires just fell off because I rolled that too much on the desk and I got through the plastic casing uh, and I actually cut through the wires. So this time around I've only done it a very little bit and they're not all falling apart. <laughs> Whoops a daisy Matt. Right, let me get back to that mistake I was just about to mention, is that we can solder any, anywhere on the bottom, anywhere on this plate. Now the thing is, is the mistake which I made, which is that when I was pre-tinning these, is that it would have been really good common sense for me to pre-tin a little spot on the opposite side. So I am now left with having to do that, so I'm just gonna give that a dab of some flux and that too, because I kind of forgot to do that last time. Quickly pre-tin the wire, there we go, and then I am just gonna get that to stick on there, he says, there we go, on the corner, and then we're gonna get that wire just to sit on the end of there. Brilliant, there we go, right. So there is our first Lion battery pack. Now let's go and grab a, battery tester and this is the point where you don't continue any further until you test it with a battery tester I'm sure you've used these before if you don't have one of these I'll put a link to it in the video description for you they are absolutely fantastic we're going to connect it up we are seeing 7.1 volts that's really really promising obviously these cells are not charged uh, and then I'll click sell 3.5 fantastic and the other cell is 3.5.9 that is absolutely fantastic that is telling us it's working now obviously I should have really clicked on uh, Lion uh, on there so you'll see total voltage 7.1 then we got 3.5 3.5 per cell that's fantastic that has just proven to us that the balance lead wiring is correct okay this is where tools like this are absolutely fantastic for the flight line and also for scenarios like this so all is now left for me to do with this battery pack specifically is the last thing to do visually inspect the soldering just to make sure that actually that is quite a good connection or maybe actually no that's not the best connection in the world I might want to go back and solder that it's your decision it's your battery remember when you make your own batteries, they're going to be flying across your head. So make sure you feel confident that they are soldered together. What I'm now going to do is go and grab myself some Capson tape. You don't have to use this posh, funny brown tape. It's just because I quite like it. Uh, and I've got loads of it here. So, uh, although I must admit it is not cheap. The goal of the Capson tape is to keep everything in here nice and secure. That's its only purpose and of course to stop the cells from rattling around later on. You could just use normal sellotape and that would be perfectly adequate. Now I am going to put a bit of tension in here to just squeeze those cells together. And the reason why I'm doing that 
is so that the foam piece which we put in the middle is all nice and tight. So let me get this one finished off and we'll have a look at the finished project. Pro pro the product. Right, all done. All I've done is give it two rounds of tape over the top to make sure that they're really well squeezed together. I've put some longer pieces over the ends and the same on the bottom and then done another piece around the top and around the bottom as well and that's our pack. Now, realistically thinking, somebody's gonna ask, what's the weight of this mat? Well, answer that very brutally honestly is that whatever your cells is, plus a few grams, all we added was some wires an XT30 connector and a balance lead and a tiny bit of solder on the bottom. What, maybe 15 grams worth extra? So if your cells are 43 grams each plus 15 grams, you do the maths, not a lot and a big ship. For what that is now is a 3,400, sorry, 3,600 milliampere battery pack. That is happy days. Now I'm gonna go on and finish off the other two and then I'm gonna go and put them on charge, get them charged up and then I'm gonna go out and get them used in anger. So with that said, if you have any questions or comments about anything which I've been uncovered here, just let me know in the comments section underneath this video. Uh, you may ask, where did you get the 18650 cells from? I got them a fog distribution or something. I'll put a link in the top right hand corner in the video description to a previous video for the company which I bought these from. UK based and of course you can buy them from multiplication, multiple locations around the world. I will put links to everything which I've been in used in this video, even down to the solder, that silver line solder, that is absolutely fantastic. I've been through so many reels of that. Um, so I will put links to everything which I've been in used in this video. Questions or comments, which is what I was saying in the comments section underneath this video. With that said, very, very happy flying. I like my Lion battery packs because of the amount of range which they provide, allow me uh, and the amount of flight time which I get in the sky. I do appreciate what we've just been uncovered here is not for everybody. I am quite confident with a soldering iron. Uh, I can be in and out and yes I did struggle in one or two places as I went along. Uh, it just meant that I was just trying to be really really tight on the amount, that's how much solder I've got left here at the moment so I was trying to be really really tight on what I was using. Anyway, if you're new here, howdy, I'm Matt, welcome aboard. Don't forget to press the red subscribe button and of course press the bell notification because in the next video we could be out flying with these lion packs. We could be dispatching some foam, cut to the video. <laughs> anyway, on that note, from myself, Matt, a big thank you to you for taking the time to join me here at the workbench. And, I, and if you've never had a go at these, I, if anything, I hope I've just proven to prove to you it's not rocket science and it's not hard and if Matt can do it, so can you. Anyway, time for me to go. As always, from myself, Matt, cheerios!